You have found Authentic Business Adventures, the business program that brings you the struggle stories and triumphant successes of business owners across the land. Past episodes of the Authentic Business Adventures program can be found on the podcast link at drawincustomers.com. We are coming to you from the Sun Prairie Community Radio Studios, underwritten by Bank of Sun Prairie. My name is James Kateman, entrepreneur, author, speaker, and helpful coach to small business owners across the country. Today, we're welcoming slash preparing to learn from Rob Grether, owner of Lake Point Realty, Dash Lito's Hot Sauce, and The Common Kitchen. This is magical. Yes, sir. It's good to be here. I am so happy I got you on here because I knew that you had a lot going on, but I did not know that you had more than a lot going on. We're, uh, we're, we try to keep busy. That's uh, cool. That's, you know, I tell people the same thing. They're like, oh, James, you're a serial entrepreneur. And I'm like... What entrepreneur isn't, right? Yeah, once you get started, it's hard to slow down. Like you just had one idea, and you're like, eh, I guess I'm done. Yeah. <laughs> so let's <laughs> let's start with, well, which one have you been doing the longest, the real estate or the hot sauce? Uh, you know, I, I actually uh, started them both around the same time. Oh, you did? And um, in all honesty, I, I became a realtor, and then the Dash Alito's hot sauce company you know, Dash Little Enterprises LLC. Yeah. Kind of started around the same time, and I and I thought to myself, I guess it's not a bad idea to have something in your back pocket. Doesn't hurt. If God forbid the real estate market continued to collapse at the time, this was around 2009, 2010. Oh, right? <laughs> just in case, maybe I should explore other options. There was a bit of a recession, and the the real estate market was sure. not real strong. So I, I just felt like it probably wasn't a bad idea, right? To have you know a couple. Couple things happening. Nice. So let's start with real estate. How did you get involved with that? So um, my Especially company. Around 2009. <laughs> yeah, you know, um, my company's Lake Point Realty, mm-hmm. um, but I didn't start with with that company. Uh, I I started with the Alvarado Group. Which oh sure, was Sarah. It? Sarah and Carlos. Mm-hmm. Uh, they were located off of Willie Street on Madison's East Side. Okay. At that time, um, I had a friend, Darcy Haber, who mm-hmm. now owns Solidarity Realty also located on, on Willie Street now. Sure. Um, she was working with the Alvarados, and I had interest in real estate. Um, my son was just born, Dashiell, okay. um, who I named the company Dashielitos after. Sure. He's the baby on the bottle, which nice. you know, we can maybe you know touch on along the, the way here. Sure, sure. Um, but Darcy, good friend of mine, was working mm-hmm. uh, for the Alvarados, and I just I had some interest in real estate. I asked her what it would take to get started, yeah. and thought that might be a career I'd like to pursue. All right, no, this is 2009. It is, yes. So sir. <laughs> the world's crumbling, everything's on fire. I had people pri- are screaming I had, bloody murder. <laughs> yeah. and you're like real estate, that's where the magic is. Well, you know, I had prior to that time had some other businesses and had some other things going, you know, going for me, and was really just trying to to, to change gears. Okay, saw it as an opportunity to be, you know, home, have a flexible, you know, home meaning in Wisconsin. I had traveled for some work prior to that time. Sure. And my son was, you know, was born or was, you know, about to be born. Sure. And it just, it was, I needed to do something. I've got a degree in English from the the UW. So, you know, that's pretty pretty broad and and vague enough that I thought I could probably, you know, parlay it into other career choices. Sure. You know. So you got to tell me a story here. Your wife is pregnant at the time and you're like, hey, I know the world is running ragged here with real estate. I was thinking about becoming a real estate agent. Well, you know, at, at, actually at the time, um, I had gone back to a career. Mm-hmm. It's an odd career that most people don't even know exists. But um, when they build such something like an oil uh, pipeline, sure, you know, the Alaskan pipeline is one okay. everybody can, can kind couple of, of those rolling around. Imagine, yeah. And there's pipelines for natural gas and oil all around the country. Yeah. I had a job in which I took x-rays of the welds that they created ah. when they welded the pieces of the pipe together to make sure the guys didn't mess to up, make sure there was no cracks or gas pockets or whatever All kinds right. of you know um, you know indiscretions may have taken place in, mm-hmm. that, in that process. So I I, I traveled around the country mm-hmm. and I had a, a truck that we worked out of it as a camper with a dark room actually attached to it like in, and you know mobile dark room with a generator and wow. we traveled all around um i made good money and it was a great i had a great time yeah. you know like a bunch of you know i bet bunch, welders on rigs are <laughs> yeah a you know I, I had a motor home that i parked in in the campground and sure you know i i had a wonderful time and i made a, a good amount of money so i was able to take the the savings that i had and say you know i'm going to do something different and i'm mm-hmm. prepared to to to, to walk 
walk away from that industry so I can be home. And sure. Be back in Wisconsin on a full time basis. Right. Again, with the real estate, I thought it was an, an opportunity I wanted to pursue. Mm-hmm. I had a savings cushion, so I could okay. I could kind of we you know, waited out a little bit to get the, the knowing, business started knowing that real estate wasn't going to be down forever uh, that's what i was hoping sure, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> people will continue to buy yeah, and sell houses right. and such so and yeah and again you know i i'd, I'd been in madison for 20 some years at the time i have okay. a, a pretty good network of you know friends and, and oh, even some family so mm-hmm. i felt like that was an opportunity to to you know utilize some of the the networking i already had in sure. place and, and so, the x-ray business, was it yours or you were no, working sir. for someone? I, I worked for someone. Um, there's companies all over the country, but the company I worked for was actually out of Milwaukee. Okay. I'd been involved with it since I was you know, a teenager. Oh, wow. Um, okay. And then, and then our, the, I was a union member, and our union is actually based out of uh, Indiana. Okay. So they would send us to jobs all around the country if our, if our company didn't have work for us, which mm-hmm. they usually did. You know, I could go hire out of the hall. Mm. And, and so... You know, again, um, that was a cool, cool, cool job, and I got to travel, and I got to have a lot of fun. I've got some funny stories. <laughs> some people who know me know that I tell some stories along the way. Right? They're all true and honest, so I'm not like, you know, exaggerating too much sure. about any of them. But some crazy things happen along the way. That sounds cool. <laughs> that sounds cool. So you decide, hey, I'm going to stay home more, become a real estate agent. 2009, wife is pregnant. She was cool with the with the change. Yeah, I think you know she she and I have you know. Both had our own businesses along the way. We're both pretty adventurous, and mm-hmm. um, you know we support each other. And all the decisions we make, we make together. And okay. I think that you know we, she had her own business at the time. She owned a doggy daycare and grooming business. Oh, really? So, and she was kind of on the front end of that. All right. You know, um, uh, trend that we see now. Mm-hmm. So she was working hard, and and you know we 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 understood the ups and downs of small business, and sure. you know the entrepreneurial spirit, if you will, that you right. have to give it a go and. You know, it. again, like I said at the time, we were also really lucky because we had some savings. You know, mm-hmm. we've we've struggled along the way when when you're just trying to make a business work, but you don't have sure that cushion to work with. We've all been there. Yeah, it's interesting because I saw a recent Facebook post. Uh, There's a couple entrepreneurs that I know that had shared the same article, and the article is essentially talking about the psychology of starting a business and being an entrepreneur and how it can lead to depression and all this <laughs> wham 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 stuff. And I'm like, you just got to have the stomach knowing that it's not going to be success from day one forever, right? There's going to be ups and downs. Hopefully you have a big picture of what you'd like to see starting and ending and the, all yeah. of somewhere in between, I guess. It's just, just like anything else, right? So I'm like, come on. <laughs> yeah. Settle down. So. There's going to be there's going to be some bad days, right? But that just makes the good days even better, right? Yeah. Well, and 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 a business I had had previously had, had closed – and we beat the recession to close it. So that was kind of, oh, you, know, wow. you know, rather than waiting for the recession sure. to wipe us out, which is a whole nother beast you have to deal with. Right, and, right. And the economic downturns affect your business. This was just, you know, moving away from that business right. altogether. Where you got to choose versus kinda, outside I kind of got to choose. I had a business partner that kind of complicated things. But yeah, that's a yeah, thing. You know. <laughs> I get it. I get it. So the real estate thing, you were working for the Alvarado Group. Yes, sir. And then eventually, I imagine, you decided to go off on your own. Yeah, so um, worked with the Alvarados uh, for about a year. Mm-hmm. And then I had a friend that owned Lake Point Realty. Okay. A guy named Bob Daling. Uh, okay. Started it out in Lodi. Sure. Um, a while back. And then Bob said, you know, if you want to come work with me, I don't do a lot of, you know, I, I, the Madison market's kind of open, however you want to interpret that. But he said, mm-hmm. come on along and you can do, you know, some... A lot of things. I mean, it was that long ago that he he's like, oh, I need a website. <laughs> you know, like, I was like, yeah, Bob, I can help you with those things. Sure. So I kind of he came, you know, let me come in, or you know, gave me a lot of uh, um, you know, freedom to, to 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 sculpt things and mold things in the way in which I wanted to see them, mm-hmm. you know, happen. And then again, this it was still kind of a, a slow time in the market. So, you know, Bob had some other things going on and, and chose to leave real estate. Oh. And at that time, I you know I, I was able to get my broker's license. And, um, you know, then I just took over the business mm-hmm. and, um, you know, changed some, some more things along the way. Sure. Um, changed the logo up, but we All kept right. the same name. All right. Um, <laughs> so you essentially bought him out? I did. Okay. Yeah. So, um, yeah, he, he, he left and then, like I said, I, I took over and then I brought in a couple of other agents. Okay. And, um, and changed the location, changed the logo a little sure. bit. 
Did um, he have other agents besides you at the time? Not at the time. No. Okay, it was just him. So it was just a one-man show. All right. And you know, and that's got its you know merits as well. You, you know, know, you're running lean, so you. There's don't something have. to be said for that. I preach people get employees because then you have your multiplier. But then there are days with my employees that I'm like, I totally understand people that are independent. Yeah, and and you know, with real estate, it's it's kind of a different um, you know model, whereas. Most agents are actually independent contractors. Sure. I think so, do they have to be? Is there some law that says they have to be? Or the, something like that? You know, if 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 you're getting compensated in certain ways, and if yeah. there's expectations of you and um, you know requirements of you, then you suddenly become an employee mm -hmm. rather than an independent contractor. So as an independent contractor, you know you you get compensated as as you go along with your commissions and sure you know that sort of thing. So it does help with some of the tax. Uh, requirements as a business owner, you don't right. have to, you know, maintain the same kind of, you know, paying into healthcare, and, right? And Unemployment tax, FICA, blah blah blah. Stuff. Yeah. Sure. Which you know is kind of a logistical, you know, nightmare. Not maybe not a nightmare, but just kind of. It's annoying. Uh, yeah, there you go. Yeah. yeah, I was trying to you know word it as nice as possible, <laughs> but it's nice not to have to deal with that on a weekly right. or, or monthly basis. Right. So. And it's very clean, right? Because they're like, hey, you sold a house for X. Your commission is Y. Exactly. That's, here's your check. It's pretty we, simple math. We don't have to do more math than that. <laughs> exactly. That's, no algorithm needed. Yeah. That's cool. So <clears throat> when you're adding your brokers, I know a few companies that have their own or their own brokerages, I guess, and they're adding people. And there's some that'll just be like, hey, if you can fog a mirror, you're in. And others that are a little bit pickier than that. So how do you pick your, your brokers? Well, or pick our agents, I guess. Your agents, but, I'm but sorry. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, my kind of just, not to say my standard, but, you know, I want to work with somebody. You know, right. like if I don't right. like the person, I don't want to work <laughs> with them. I'm You're annoying. Not. Get out. Yeah, you know, I mean, I want to have a, a, a work environment that I'm happy to be in. Sure. Especially I, as I get to kind of pick and choose along mm -hmm. the way. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, we did just open a brand new office. Nice. Congrats. Uh, yeah. So that's exciting. I mean, it really, really is something that I've had my eyes on and really wanted to happen for, for, for years now. Sure. Um, I'm an Atwood resident. Okay. I live just off of Atwood near the Glass Nickel. Over, oh, sure. Over on the, you know, the east it's side. It's a neat area. It's a great area. And when, when I bought it, when we bought our house 20 years ago, which mm -hmm. is, that's, I mean, 20 years you now. You bought it at the age of 12? <laughs> no, I know. Well, I just, I just had my 40-something birthday. Oh, yeah. um, After 40, you stop counting. Yeah. Um, like, I'm not retired yet. That's all that matters. So, you know, when we bought our house, you know, and I say we, my, my wife, Emily, and I. Sure. Um, we were dating at the time, but we're since we're, we just celebrated our 15th anniversary. Oh, congrats. Wedding anniversary. Sure. We went to the Packer game, actually. All right. Um, kind of as a celebration as we'd gone to the Packer game right, right after we got married. Oh, nice. So, all right. But when Full we circle. Yeah. When we bought our house in, in, on the app, neighborhood we were kind of on the end of the you know the the the, the hip area sure and it's since grown to to, to to fill up around us and is pretty you know popular area we love yeah. lowell school which is where our, both of our kids go yeah um our five our seven-year-old and our 10-year-old ivy is seven and Dashwell's now 10 all right um but you know I, i've got a lot of love for the atwood neighborhood um, mm -hmm. a lot of love for the east side in general i did you know Willie Street and in that area, but really just wanted a storefront location with some signage and with some, you know, some real direct connection to the neighborhood. Okay. And we finally found what we were looking for and we were able to make it happen. So very just, cool. Just this year, we ended up um, in Kennedy Place on Atwood. Kennedy Place. I in place between it. Anytime Fitness. Okay. And Barley Pop. Okay. Monsoon Siam's right there mm -hmm. as well. Um, table wine, okay, kind of, you know, really directly um, adjacent to the Shanks corners of you know Winnebago and yeah. and, and Atwood. Yeah. Um, so we've got a really, I think, just a great space over there. Um, we can, you know, we've got a f like a, a reception area. So we've got some place for our, our transaction coordinator to sit. Mm -hmm. I've got a nice little office that has, you know, windows on facing Atwood. I've got listings up in the window so people are walking by oh, and they very can, cool. can check it out. And yeah. they want to come and get more information, they can. Sure. Um, and then we've got just a nice big kind of 
of open space. It used to be a yoga and Tai Chi place. Okay. So it's got this big room that was where they had done those classes and still got the flooring, which is interesting. So it's kind of a soft padded floor that oh, looks like okay. hardwood. Sure. So people kind of um, step back when they first step on it. It's like a boxing um, ring or yeah, something. <laughs> well, it, 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 you can't tell when you step on it that it's a soft floor. So sure. you think you're almost stepping on hardwood. but oh. <laughs> it's, And there was a woman, a woman stepped on it with a stiletto heel and actually punctured it. Oh, no. So, <laughs> we have to put a sign up, which we haven't done yet, but this says, like, you know, no stiletto heels on soft floor. That's funny. Um, but in that space, <laughs> we have, you know, desks for our agents. We've All got right. a nice seating area with a couch and some chairs. We've got a nice conference table area mm-hmm. with a TV on the wall. So if you want to have presentations, you can. Or if the kids are there for, for something, we can sure. throw the video game system on, which we don't always do. But right. it's an option we have. Right, right. Um, so, you know, we can accommodate a lot of different things in the space including more agents you know we've got very cool we've got agents right now most agents don't spend a lot of time in the office anyways hope not so you know they can (laughs) come in they they can do what they want on on you know online you know from anywhere yeah but if they want to come in and they you know they have a desk that they can use and you know printer they can print stuff out on sure that's cool you know Kind of fun. I like it. So that just happened in the past month. Is yeah, right? just just uh, just October, September, October. Nice. So very cool. Here we are in November. So, so were you were you just operating out of your house before? No, I um I'd had an office. So I have an office and I also have a kitchen. The okay. kitchen is for the 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 Dash Alito slash Common Kitchen right. um, part of it, uh, and then I had an office both uh, located in the uh, Madison Enterprise Center. Okay. And that's at 100 South Baldwin in between sure. East Wash and Willie Street. Okay. Um, run by the Commonwealth Development. Uh, it's a business incubator. Mm-hmm. And um, I had I had a separate office from the kitchen. So within that office, we had space for the agents to come and work out of if they, oh, very really, cool. if they really wanted. But again, sure. they didn't. So, right. <laughs> you, know, you know, we had a couple desks and a, a, a couple tables and a couch. and Sure. You know, call it an office. We're and good. it was great. It had you know loft. It's it's like an old warehouse, so it had yeah. loft style windows and mm-hmm. pe- you know high ceilings. And you know I love it. It's a really cool place, but it just didn't have that frontage and didn't have that exposure for the right. real estate company. Right. That, that I yeah, I can see how real. It's not ideal for real estate. Yeah, just doesn't have the feel. I guess. Yeah, I, mean, I it, totally see it as a. I really hot liked sauce it because I well I I liked it because I just kind of had nice quiet space to work. Right. <laughs> you know, leave the house just to go to work. And, totally. And calm calm yep. down. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Some I have people always asking me about calls on calls, saying, "Hey, does your crew work from home?" And I'm like, "No, we need an office because everybody's got to escape from home for eight hours a day." Yeah. So when I thought about keeping it just for a hangout spot, but sure, that's uh, not good business. To right. <laughs> <laughs> it's not ideal, but yeah, there's there's that. <laughs> so the new space is cool. It sounds awesome. Is there? And it sounds like you're growing with Lake Point Realty. Yeah, I, I think so. Yeah, we've we've got um, meetings with with agents that are interested in considering, you know, sure. whether or not to come along. And a lot of what they look into is what you know, what sort of systems we have in place, what mm-hmm. we're using for transaction coordination, or mm-hmm. you know, who the, the the people involved with the company are. And, sure. And then again, even just meeting, and if you you know five minutes into it, you don't really care for the person, then you kind of, <laughs> you kind of know that one's not going to so be a good. So the door's member. over there. Yeah, you know, like it's, have a, it's, yeah, it's been great to talk sure. to you. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> we'll call you. Yeah. <laughs> so you made a perfect segue um, talking about the common kitchen. So let's talk. Let's allude to the common kitchen, then we can hit the hot sauce deal. Sure. So Common Kitchen came first, I imagine, it sounds like. No, sir. Um, the Common Kitchen is actually f- fairly new. I just get this stuff out I, of order. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> so, so Dash Alitos, I can give you a quick little synopsis yeah, of, yeah. of how the business kind of started. Um, I started making hot sauce for a friend of mine that owns the Green Owl Cafe. Okay. On Atwood Avenue. Yeah, yeah. Right in that Shanks corner next to the Alchemy and the Ideal mm-hmm. and, you know, that little kind of pocket of, uh, of businesses. Yeah. When she opened her, her restaurant about, you know, nine or so years ago, whatever it was, mm-hmm. that was right around the time that I had started making Dash Alitos just kind of as a hobby. Okay. Right? As a, just out of your house? Yeah. And I was, and I, I had started to, I had started the whole salsa making as part of an urban gardening program I had done working okay. with youth services of Southern Wisconsin. Sure. Um, taking, you know, at risk and, you know, young people that were in the, in the system, yeah. taking them out to do community service projects or, you know, some different sorts of, uh, funded, uh, urban gardening. Okay. Um, 
We cleaned up the Sun Prairie uh, community gardens on a couple of occasions. Just over here. Right around the corner from where we're at. All right. Um, so we would go out there and just weed it, and just there was some different things we did over there that we then had some plots that we started to grow food out of. We did the same thing down on Ally Drive. Okay. Um, and then I was taking the kids and, you know, talking to them about nutrition and food plants and, you know, what we were doing with it. And then we would take the food, take, excuse me, take the produce and, like, make salsa or make, you know, a part of a community meal. Really? We did some, some, some pretty cool things. And that this is awesome. kind of on the front end of the whole urban gardening, which right, has right, kind right. of become more of a buzzword. Sure. This is, you know, 10 or 15 years ago before that was really right. a, a thing. Um, and so... I had already started doing this. I, I'd come up with a salsa making kind of project idea that we would make the salsa and sell it and all that kind of stuff. It didn't come to fruition. I moved on to a, a separate, totally different business. But, sure. Um, I continued to make salsa. Then I started making hot sauce just as a, a, a kind of a hobby. Okay. And then when this friend opened the Green Owl, I, I introduced her to one of my sauces. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Excuse me. And, and I said, you know, this would be, I think, great for you to have an in-house hot sauce Mm -hmm. no real intentions of having a business just thought it'd be cool sure you know and then i started making it for her in her kitchen okay and then she was using it in in some of her dishes and giving it on the side to people in the ramekins for you know to put on their eggs or whatever Mm -hmm. and then people asked if they could buy it oh so that's cool yeah that's a good question yeah you know so suddenly i was like well i guess i better go get my certification and my you know my you know get the kitchen certified and and cleared with the state Mm -hmm. you know i mean i had to really kind of just figure out all this stuff on my own sure you know the um, health code and yeah you know and and you know like i said the the, the certifications i needed and, and the protocols that had to be followed and um you know, and I started to get it all figured out, and I started to bottle it, and had to come up with the company, you know, name, which I still thought it was just me having fun with. So I took a picture of my son Dashel, who at the time was about six months old, from a flip phone nice. on our back porch. What's that? <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> without the foresight that years later, when they tried to expand it onto the jumbotron at the Mallards game, right. the pixelization would be so <laughs> terrible that he looked like he was just not doing well. It's like know? an old like, Nintendo game, yeah, right? Yeah, you know, like he's, his face just got completely distorted and sure. hor- horrifying. <laughs> <laughs> So, Sorry, Dashiell. <laughs> yeah, so we actually had to make a um, an animated version of the label so that they could use it on the on the jumbotron and some of these other places. All right, we ultimately, you know, found ourselves needing a a, a cleaner image for. Sure, <laughs> <laughs> Photoshop, please. Yeah. So cool. so that was where we we used we used the green owl for years as our as our commercial kitchen. Okay. And I had it registered with the FDA and everything and yeah. you know the 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 hours of operation for the green owl was you know a, a normal restaurant working until 10 o'clock at night or mm-hmm. 10 30 or whatever. So I would go into the green owl at like 11 o'clock at night or, yeah. or midnight right. and work from midnight until like three or four or five in the morning <laughs> making sauce, sauce and then, you know, get, get up and still take the, you know, the kids to school or be part of it as much as I could be. And sure. You know, I wasn't doing it every day all the time. So right. I schedule it accordingly as, as much as possible. Right. But finally, we decided to pull the trigger on our own space. All right. What was the what was the defining moment for that? You know, we had gotten big enough mm-hmm. that we had actually uh, sourced out our um, sauce ma- production mm-hmm. to a couple of other companies. You know, kind of locally. There's a okay. place down in Dodgeville called Innovations Kitchen. Okay. Fabulous group of people down there, but. They took it on, and then we actually outgrew them. Oh, nice! And they said, "Yeah, you know, we, we you should probably look at one of the the the, the second tier of sure. manufacturing companies." So we worked with a company out of East Troy called Contract Comestibles. Okay, had a good you know working relationship with them, but we you know all along I had my eyes on the math involved. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, we're paying them fifty cents a bottle or whatever it is. Sure. So you know, right around that fifty cents a bottle, if we can produce. You know, if we if we have production needs that exceed, you know, a thousand bottles, mm-hmm. that suddenly becomes, you know, five hundred dollars sure. that we can invest into a space and take that into consideration as to what rent costs and right. you know, those sorts of things and labor costs and, and equipment and materials. Mm-hmm. So we got to the threshold where I felt like our, our math was pretty reasonably close and we could justify a space if we could find the right space. Sure. 
And luckily enough, we were already in a, in a, in a business incubator that had some production spaces that you know, yeah. kind of fit with that. It, we, the one we chose is, was ultimately a white box, which okay. means it was, you know, is, is not finished in any way, mm-hmm. which was good and bad. You know, we got to make some choices about sure. what we wanted to see there, and then we mm-hmm. got to put it in, but we also had to spend the money to do you that. Had, you had to pay for it, <laughs> yeah. sure. So That um, makes sense. So it sounds like you were... So you had Green Owl Cafe where you're supplying sauce for them, but then you must have gone out and sold grocery stores and stuff like that in between. Yeah, so we, own space. we 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 pretty soon after getting you know that um, that that question as to if people could buy it, we and we started to to, to produce it. We got the labeling and went out and found the UPCs and sure. got registered with the FDA and okay. did all those things that we needed to do. Mm-hmm. Right, you know, right around that time, which made natural synergy, we were like, well, let's go to the store. Right. We went to Jennifer Street Market, which is right in our neighborhood. Great, mm-hmm. great local market that still to this day is one of our best selling, you know, locations and just great supporting, you know, sure. c- group of people over yeah, there. Yeah. So they they were they were good to us and put us on the shelf. Mm-hmm. And we just, you know, I, I, I friends of mine who know have heard me tell stories know the Mallard story, but the Mallards was really kind of a defining moment okay. where. I called the Mallards right around that same time, two thousand and you know, ten or eleven or whatever sure. it was. When they're still, they're not as big as they are now. This is back then when they're still growing, right? Yeah, they yeah figuring stuff out. But they, you know, they they had a pretty good system where they sure. had, you know, the, Warner Park was pretty well developed. Where I, I've known the, the Mallards from previous businesses when it was just, you know, Connor and Vern over there. Okay. And you know, Connor was making the the calls, sales calls, and now I mean he's the general manager and owner, and, mm-hmm. and you know he's in the front office and he's all over the state doing stuff with all the other big top stuff or whatever yeah. their their companies call. But sure, I love those guys too props mm-hmm. to, to, to that organization yeah um but so ar- around that time you know back in 2010 or 11 i'd have to look at my numbers on yeah it. it's all good but it was when i um i called and i said hey i want to do some advertising as lake point realty okay and i want to come out and meet you to see about maybe putting a sign up on the the wall or on the dugout or something right so i went out there to meet with uh you know warner park when went to meet mm-hmm. the guys at the office and I sat down and I said, before we get started on this conversation about Lake Point, I, I, I want this to be the official hot sauce of the Mallards. And I pulled a couple of bottles out of my pockets. Nice. And they said, you know what? That's crazy. We were just talking about putting hot sauce on the concessions. All right. You know, they had ketchup and mustard and right, barbecue. Right. But they said, we were just talking about putting hot sauce <laughs> on the concession stand. Yeah. And then that was... Kind of the conversation took off from there. Very cool. And within a couple of weeks, we were the official hot sauce on the Mallards. And yeah. we had our half gallons with a pump in all the different oh, nice. locations. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, and then we really just, you know, ran with that too and took it over to Hy-Vee, who was mm-hmm. involved with the Mallards. And that got us on the shelf there. All right. And then, you know, took it. Then, you know, if if you're on Hy-Vee, then Metcalfs wants you because that's mm-hmm. another great organization, Metcalfs. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we, we, we've got a lot of love for those guys too. Mm-hmm. We we actually are, I don't know if you call us the official hot sauce of Bratfest. Are you really? That's a, you know, we're out in the concession area there every All right. year with, with half gallons of sauce with the pumps and <laughs> You know, I suppose because that's a Metcalf's thing, right? Exactly. Okay. So yeah, that's gotcha. a, Metcalf's runs runs the world's largest brat fest. Yeah, I still remember going to the ones where it was just picnic tables in their parking lot. Yeah, out in <laughs> Hilldale, I think. You know, a little bigger. Yeah. So um, yeah, and just from there, we've just been been very fortunate to you know to to be able to kind of just parlay mm-hmm. all of that success into into more success and very cool. You know, I I use the play on words that we've been able to grow. Kind of organically. Sure. <laughs> yeah. nice. So are you, like it sounds like you had to put some time in it from a sales point of view. So how did you balance that with the real estate, new kid, wife, et cetera, et cetera? I don't know how I balanced it. I just <laughs> did what I had to do, I think. You know, right. I mean, I, I, you know, you, you, you take it as you have to. Sure. So, you know, I, I write myself a lot of notes. And I didn't think get I, to work. Yeah, oh, just, what do I need to do today? All you right. know, and sometimes the front is is Lake Point Realty, and sometimes the back of the piece of paper is Dash Alitos. All right. Sometimes it's just you know lining up the things that need to get done, sure. or, or reminding myself of All a lot right. of things. Um, but again, you know, you, you, every day is different, mm-hmm. and um, never bored. Yeah. So. Um, the production part of it, I, I've, I've been trying to get a, a little bit less attached to the kitchen. 
because okay. that's a real that's a long day right a lot of times mm-hmm. um you know cooking the sauce and then bottling the sauce and you know labeling it and all that and we've got some equipment that you know eases some of that mm-hmm. you know i mean i tell people back in the day when dash Alitos first started i hand cut all of the labels i and my mother-in-law and you know the support network of friends and family who wow. were willing to, to work with me sure because you know in order to get the right pricing to be able to afford the labels i would have had to get at least a minimum of like a thousand labels mm-hmm. and i tell the joke i laugh about it. i said i didn't want 985 <laughs> reminders of a failed <laughs> business if it didn't work right you know i don't want awesome. so i was like well let's just cut these until we get until sure. we know for sure that we're going to be able to 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 make it another day right. or you right. know get another account to help <laughs> right. justify that that's awesome so I've got pretty good scissor skills. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Kindergarten paid Something off. Something I pride myself in. I stay in the lines, man. I'm that's, not kidding. <laughs> that's awesome. Oh, that's incredible. So uh, so it grew because you're like, screw this. I don't want to be cutting the rest of my life. Yeah. Well, you know, you got to just take those leaps along the way. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and sometimes it's chicken or the egg, you know, which right. one comes first. And, right. You know. Um, Prove the model. So I get it. I get it. Yeah. And, and we've just... Um, like I said, tried to take these steps incrementally so that I've been very fortunate. Like I said, the organic thing was pretty pretty legit where we didn't have to take out a big giant loan sure. to spend, you know, all these things to, to just all of a sudden buy a business. Right. You know, right. Lake Point's the same way. I, I mean, this new office is a big commitment to me for me. Um, and, you know, even just buying new furniture, you know, like going to buy, you mm-hmm. know, stuff for the, for the desks and the, and the, ch- and the chairs. Oh, commercial you know? furniture is stupid. Oh man. And, you know, and I'm a thrifter, but I didn't want to go out and buy five desks from the UW swap shop and, right. and have these big clunky metal desks. Right. So I, you know, we've got a really nice space that we wanted to, to fill in mm-hmm. really nicely, but. I had to bite the bullet and spend thousands of dollars on yeah. just furniture, right? You know, like office chairs, it's like a hundred bucks, a hundred and something, you know. Like, yeah. And we needed ten of them. Minimum. So, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I remember nice. when, we were, when we were looking at commercial desks, I was like, wait, wait, wait. Can't we just buy a flat <laughs> door and throw it on a couple filing cabinets and call it good? Yeah. This is stupid. So uh, the markup is insane. Yeah. So and I had to buy a reception desk. Like I've oh. never, I've, I'm <laughs> at least conscious of like a desk or a conference table right. or a couch, but a, a reception desk. Oh yeah. I just didn't, you know, that's like, like putting Corvette on a car part, right? <laughs> like it doubles the price. I I just didn't know that was an interesting yeah search for me to be put yeah. on. We've both had to learn that. Yeah. That's fantastic. Yeah. So then the, well, let me back up a step. Do you have employees then with the Dash Alitos? So with Dash Alitos, I do. Okay. Um, I have some employees. I, I've utilized some of the workforce development programs. Okay. So there's a DVR type of employment service. So I've helped. I've had some help with with you know from some of those services. Mm-hmm. I've also utilized some of the youth uh, employment services. CEOs okay. of Tomorrow okay. um, is is a great organization that works with young people. Mm-hmm. And I've had um, an employee from that organization two summers in a row. Okay. And those are young people that you know very consciously like want to learn about business and want to sure. learn. You know, they're not just. Um, you know, young people with like community service hours to, <laughs> right. to finish. These are, these are, these hundreds, yeah, right. these are, these are, you know, college bound or, or, you know, people with that young people with that sort of interest. Okay. So I've, I've had some great experiences with them. Um, and then, like I said, with DVR, we've had some, some, some good experiences there. And then I've, I've actually kept a couple people on after their programs were over. Okay. And then I also have some other people that I've just, you know, had as employees for a couple of sure. years along so, the way. How much are you producing in a given week or month? Or you know, um, just typical. Yeah, it, I mean, and, and fifty-five it's re- gallon drums of hot sauce. Or? So yeah, we've got we've got a twenty gallons and we've got forty gallon um, cookers. Forty gallon. That's a lot well, of hot sauce. Well, and the the forty gallons are actually a tilt skillet. Okay. Um, so we can do other things in that tilt skillet. We oh. also, yeah, as the common kitchen, and and to segue into the common kitchen yeah, yeah. question and answer. Um, when we chose to, to, t- to take on the space at the Enterprise Center and take on the commercial kitchen, mm-hmm. 
rather than opening that space as Dash Alitos, mm-hmm. I formed a new LLC okay. and called it the Common Kitchen okay. LLC. Best name in the world, right? Yeah, well, <laughs> it's a play on words in part because um, Commonwealth Development manages the building. Oh, gotcha. So sure. I kind of had a little bit of a, of a, of a nod to, to them. Mm-hmm. Um, also just really didn't want to sound you know, um, pretentious, you know, I <laughs> best kitchen in the world. The LLC, best. You know, like, <laughs> you know, couldn't like, possibly any cooler. Yeah. You know, like super great place, LLC, sure. uh, you know? Um, but so I, I formed that LLC so that I could make Dash in this, in that space, but mm-hmm. I could also take on manufacturing clients. Mm-hmm. So if a, a company, Wants us to make their stuff. You know, we've got a barbecue uh, restaurant that has their own in-house hot sauce, or excuse me, barbecue sauce. Okay. They hired us to to make that for them and then bottle it. To make and bottle. Okay. So what I can do is because of my certifications, sure, I can go and get the acidified foods, you know, uh, process cleared. Sure. And I can then be cleared as the manufacturer mm-hmm. because I have those, you know, those certifications and sure. you know, licenses and, and our space is cleared to do that where, you know, you can't just make stuff in your kitchen at home. Right. And you can't just bottle it without following, you know, you know, processes that have mm-hmm. to be cleared by an authority. Sure. All the little things. So we created this new company. I created this new company so that I could make that person's product. Mm-hmm. And if God forbid something goes wrong and they want to sue me sure. or some kind of litigation occurs, right. they're not involving Dash Alitos. It's independent. And exactly. Sure. So Dash Alitos is its own entity. Mm-hmm. The Common Kitchen is its own entity. So are people in the Common Kitchen you are producing? It's not like you're it's bringing in other It's not a shared people. kitchen. Not a shared kitchen. That's okay. what a lot of people ask is, right. oh, you know, who else is there? Nobody. It's just me. Okay. You know. You and your people. And my people, yeah. Okay. <laughs> but, I mean, people, you know, individuals, companies come to me and say, I want to make this in your kitchen. And I, I have to just apologize and say that's not what you know we're we doing there. We can make it for you yeah. in the kitchen. Okay. You know, I mean, there's a lot of logistical issues. You know, I've got friends with food carts, and they're like, "Hey, can we use it?" And I'm like, "No, I don't." You know, I mean, right. it's, it's a it's a it's a lot of activity in a, in mm-hmm. a commercial kitchen, and you know what? I, I want to help everybody along the way, but that one's a hard one to to fit into it. Right. You know, coupled with the fact that it's not that big a space. Right. And and that's not the the lease agreement I have with the Commonwealth Development. People. Sure. That you know have to clear your your your, your purposes, and mm-hmm. as an incubator, you actually have to um, apply for uh, you know tenancy oh. in, in there. There's right. also a period of time that you can only be there for for five years in the enterprise center. Okay, and then they hope that you've grown by that time. You can move into the main street industries, which is another okay. second tier kind of incubator that sure. they have. All right. Um, so, so I was also I was this. also kind of conscious that I got to start a new lease period. Sure, because oh, Dash nice. Alitos had already been there for a couple of years right. in a different office type of setting. Sure. So now I get a new five year lease. Oh, which, very cool. Which you know, I mean, I'm spending tens of thousands of dollars to build out a kitchen. Yeah. I want to make sure it's not right, right. you know 700 days later I'm having to move. <laughs> you know, like knock knock knock. Yeah, you no, know, like, no, ah, not home. Bummer. Sure. Uh, so. so that's so. How many companies do you produce something for then? You know, um, we we're, we're we're very actively involved with about three or four. Okay. There's a um, a company called Flavor Temptations or, or Fill My Recipe. Okay. Um, they they have an Indian um, spice packets that they sell. Yeah. With instructions. I've heard of them. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Great, great company. A husband and wife. Mm-hmm. Um, they're actually located in the same building, but a floor below us. They don't have production facilities. Right. They have their spice packets filled in, in a different sort of setting. Okay. But we just started making a masala sauce for them. Oh, nice. Okay. And that's something we use the tilt skillet for. We make sure. it in 40-gallon batches, 16-ounce <laughs> jars, wow. you know. You know. Um, and and they're, you know, there's that's an example of someone we work with. You know, I've, in all honesty, I had a manager who ended up leaving. She, she had another job she was doing. Mm-hmm. And, and because she left, it slowed that whole company down oh. because I didn't have the time sure. to be out actively pursuing new business, right. coupled with the fact that I also wasn't prepared to take on uh, you know, a, a more cooking and more production than just what the Dash Alito's requirements sure. were. So are you so, hiring? So I don't mean to put you on no, the spot. And, you know, but and, like, and, you know, we've got someone who's, who's coming in to work with us. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's kind of with the understanding that he's going to work with us to also find more business. 
okay. so that it can justify his position. Oh, you know, gotcha. we okay. got to sure. walk that fine line where yeah. we can't pay him without having that business. And we don't have the business really sure. because we've declined to work with other right. companies. I imagine if you're not, well, let me put it to you this way, right? I just watched uh, How It's Made, the ice cream sandwich thing, right? <laughs> and I'm watching this little video. It's a five-minute video, you know, How It's Made, the ice cream sandwich. And I'm thinking somebody had to buy all this equipment. And they, it said they're producing 100 ice cream sandwiches. Um, was it a minute? I think it was a minute. And I thought, that's a lot of ice cream sandwiches. <laughs> the, the barrier to entry between zero and 100 a minute now you got all these sandwiches or hot sauce that you got to sell, right? You got people hired. You got this equipment. So there's this gray area of I sold 10 sandwiches. So, well, that's a good start, but we got a full freezer, right? Like, so it's got to be a challenge coming up with full time for your people. You don't want to make too much and then have a surplus and then yeah. have it, you know. Luckily enough, for most of our acidified products, they have a two year shelf life. All right. So that's at least a good thing that sure. you don't end up making it and then it sits there. Um, and then goes bad and you're, right. and you're out of the cash on all yeah. that. But you're exactly right. You have to figure out what the numbers have to be. Mm -hmm. Again, like we said, I said even just looking at building the space or taking on that, I had to do the numbers to kind of figure out if we were going to have a necessity to make enough mm -hmm. to justify having the space. Yeah. And, it, and we do, but I okay. think that we could utilize that space more. Right. And I think that we will ultimately be able to compensate this person who takes on the managerial position right. with, the, with you know, the monies that we make as manufacturers sure. to support that person's full-time okay. full position. So then is your, is your capacity limitation currently space or is it people? It's people and okay. it's also business because, you know, we have honestly declined – to sure. you know, a, a, a couple of different accounts, if you will. Well, I mean, I suppose um, if you lose one or two, that's a big nut. Right? Well, but I, I honestly, I, there's been a couple of calls that I just said I'm not prepared to, to take this on because oh, sure. you want us, you know, so Innovations Kitchen out in Dodgeville. Yeah. They they do they're they're that next step from where we are. We're sure. we're a micro batch processor. Okay. That's sure. kind of our niche. Mm -hmm. And so that's part of why it's so cool that we can work with these small companies that don't want, you know, 10,000 bottles. Mm -hmm. They want hundreds of bottles. Sure. And you know, Innovations Kitchen told me recently when I was talking to them Processor to processor, friends of mine and all that. Yeah. They have 21 different barbecue sauce companies they work with. <laughs> oh you know, and I know that if I really engaged with them and said we're wanting more business, mm -hmm. they would be probably you know willing to to refer some things our sure. way. Okay. But I also was like, man, I'm busy. I just opened up a new real estate <laughs> office and I got Dash Alitos is you know, it's growing and it's like sure. you know, so those couple of things just on my plate alone keep right. keep me pretty well, you know, All involved. Right. And then again, you know, I'm I'm and I haven't even talked about like my active like life with my kids and you sure. know like what? Yeah, you know I, I, You I'm, have a social life? I, <laughs> Yeah, so I, I try not to be, you know, gone and busy doing these right. things all the time. Otherwise, what's the point? Yeah. Yeah, it's just like, I live to work 24-7. Yeah. Oh, and, and, Probably you know, not and, ideal. And Dash doesn't like to come over there because he says it smells like hot sauce. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, like... I know why. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I'm like... Yes, yeah, yeah. So yeah. Is, is Dash Alito's more or less a local Madison-ish thing, or is it going national? Are you in Canada or anything crazy? Yeah, you know, we're, um, we're statewide, and we have branched out into some other states. Okay. Um, we're all the way out in Ohio. And, oh, very um, cool. A couple of places out there. Yeah. You know, some of that comes from the fact that we were doing different, um, you know, f spicy food shows. Oh, sure. And like one of them was in Ohio. And all, like right. all of a sudden there was stores there. And we'll go do something up in Minnesota in December here. And nice. that'll get us into some more places. And, okay. you know, a lot of introductions made. And, you know. Sure. Um, the big problem we have or the, the, the one of the just things we're trying to figure out is just distribution. I was just going to ask you about that, right? Because the store orders like, hey, we want two cases. Like, you're going to drive five hours? Yeah, for two cases? you know, and that's the thing is I got an order for four cases from a um, – actually, it's a it's a, it's a online service called Fuego Box. Okay. So they do a monthly subscription, hot sauce subscription. All right. And we had been featured as one of their box bottles um, about a year ago. And that was a cool order. That was 
was 200 cases. Nice. And, you know, it was a cool palette of sure. hot sauce. That's took awesome. Took pictures with the thumbs up, wrapping it, and right, like, right. on its way. You know, We've made that. it. Yeah, you know, like <laughs> thousands of dollars, which is a great order. Yeah. But they call me, you know, the other day, they're like, we need four cases of hot sauce to fill. Because they also feature us on their website. All right. So if you had it, you, you know, last year... As part of the subscription, mm -hmm. you can come back to their website and find all of those bottles that had been sure. in their boxes over the years, all right. and you can order it. And I said, you know, four ca four cases is like the worst number, right? Because it's, it's too it's, big to be. It's too big to fit in like a you know a USPS prepaid, sure. you know, flat rate medium box, right? But it's not big enough to put onto a pallet and put it onto a, a you know freight. Uh, mm -hmm. you know priced mm -hmm. you know f freight is is pretty cool like we get pallets of bottles from a, a company in milwaukee yeah and it's like 50 bucks <laughs> you know like wow yeah because it's just it, it fitted on the truck and it's just it's sure oh, you know the pricing is just it, it's it's something that they tag along with other stuff oh okay. yeah you know and like i used to drive to milwaukee and fill up my like scion xb with bottles right you know that was like <laughs> 50 dollars in my time and i bet and gas, at least you know? yeah, yeah, like, yeah probably double that and yeah, yeah. when it, when i finally got to that place where i'm like we're big enough to buy a pallet <laughs> i was like man i should have been doing this all along Dreams just to do save, come true. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> save myself the hassle that's cool uh, that but again cool. i didn't want to i didn't want a pallet of bottles right you know like sitting there just taking up space and, and getting yeah one step dusty. at a time so that is cool so let's talk about you have the flavor <laughs> awards you gotta tell me about this okay so years ago we were asked to to be involved in a um uh, a thing locally mm -hmm. and um the bacon brew and barbecue fest people here in sun prairie yeah. asked us if we would help them kind of do some stuff with the fiery foods uh, thing they were doing so i said you know what i'm going to try and get some people to show up from the the network of people i'd already kind of created with dash alitos okay so we were going to have them come for the weekend and be vendors and, and kind of make the Bacon Brew and Barbecue Fest thing kind of a different, um, you know, bigger than what it was and just mm -hmm. add more more things to it. Sure. So I started thinking about it, and Dash Alitos had already won, like, a World Hot Sauce Award. Oh, congrats. We've, we've won a Scovy Award, which is right. kind of a real recognizable spicy food competition. Okay. Sure. As part of, like, the Albuquerque, you know, Fiery Foods Fest, which is, like, you know, the prestigious you know <laughs> competition the hot sauce king <laughs> yeah, yeah that's like the one that had, you know in in the know people are right. like, that's a great one sure there's like the hot pepper awards sure you know there's all these different competitions we'd been involved with and we'd won so i kind of understood the um you know the the process of of being in a competition and kind of the protocol involved mm -hmm. and I had seen that there were things being done in all these different competitions that I didn't care for. I'd also seen that they were making a lot of money. You know, they were charging seventy-five or eighty or a hundred dollars per product entry. Just to enter. You know, just yeah, to yeah. enter. You know, and one of them, Dash Alitos won second place in like the hot sauce medium or something. They sent us an inkjet printed certificate. Nah, you know, thanks, like guy, with the banding and everything. Yeah, I mean, he printed it off on his little HP, yeah, sure. you know, printer. And there you it, go. Yeah, and I was like, oh man, eighty dollars or whatever the entry was. Yeah. And I was like, oh, I want a hot sauce, you know, yeah. hot pepper award. But like, I put like my coffee cup on that thing. Right. Well, Hanging it up you know, on like, the wall. It wasn't right? even worth like hanging <laughs> it in a frame. So, I figured, you know, I, I've got a pretty good grasp on how these competitions work. I'm going to create one. Nice. And we're going to do it in kind of conjunction with this other stuff. That is how it's <laughs> done. I love this. This is awesome. Well, and, you know, and the, and the World Hot Sauce Awards, right? That's that's a competition we've been in. Sure. That's like, ooh, World Hot Sauce right. Awards. Yeah. That was just some dude in Texas who did it in conjunction <laughs> with, like, the Texas Hot Sauce Festival. <laughs> He's just some you guy in his garage. And, like, Yeah, he, you guys won. <laughs> yeah, and he was charging, like, 100 bucks, and he was saying, like, yeah, he had, like, you know, 40 different categories. And he was, like, I mean... I was doing the math and I was like, wow, that's pretty, wow. pretty straightforward, like, um, right. you know, opportunity. Right. So, but I also recognized that there was things that weren't being done well. Mm -hmm. So I created the International Flavor Awards. All right. And when you win All right. an International Flavor Awards, you win a Flav. <laughs> <laughs> not Flavor Flav. That's trademarked. Not, right. It's spelled differently. All right. We're F L A V E. Okay. Where Flavor Flav is F L A V, F L A V, yeah, all right. <laughs> or F L A V A. Whatever you he know, is, what? the big clock guy. Variation on that, but we're not trying to have any infringement suits brought against sure. us. Sure. 
Um, I imagine there won't be any confusion between a hot sauce award <laughs> well, and some Well, you know, at some guy. point in time when we get big enough, maybe we'll have him show up and sure. like, be like, here's the flavor flames. Yeah. He's going to be 110 <laughs> years old. <laughs> yeah, you know, like. Is he still alive? I, I believe he, he is. Okay. But, I don't know. You know. Um, and so what we did is we we our mission is to provide small to medium-sized companies a platform by which to stand on to be, you know, compete against similar-sized companies sure. internationally. Very cool. And so we, 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 we provide an opportunity at a more economical price. Mm-hmm. So instead of the 75 or 80 or or $100 entry, mm-hmm. ours is generally somewhere starting at about 60 bucks. Okay. And then from there, if you have multiple products entered, you get discounts. Okay. So it can go all the way up to like uh, like 10 products entered for like 350 bucks. Oh, very cool. So that's really, really you know reasonable in comparison to what right. these other companies are, sure. are, are offering. All right. And then when you win first place, you get a hand-blown glass award. Wow. With a placard that has your name and it says 2019 or 18, right. 2000, nope. whatever. No yeah, and I mean, and it's straight engraved from the awards company. Sure. And it says first place, hot sauce, hot or hot sauce, medium or whatever right. category. And then your company's name and the product. Very cool. So second and third place get really nice, big, long streamed, uh, you know, ribbons. Mm-hmm. And they're very, they're all, every year it's different color schemes. So we've had, you know, we're in our fifth year this year, all right. and we've had companies that have entered all five years so that they have, uh, if they win, they have five different either glass awards or, sure. or ribbons. Oh, that's super cool. And, 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 and ultimately, my goal, which is what we were able to achieve this last year, was to branch out beyond just the spicy foods genre mm-hmm. and actually get into the artisan foods. All right. So in the summertime, we do the spicy flavors, mm-hmm. so hot sauces and salsas and barbecue sauces and you know, a variety of like spicy snacks and things of that sure. sort. Okay. And then in the wintertime, we do the artisan flavors, okay. which is like oils and vinegars and chutneys and, and sauces, all right. you know, mustards and ketchups sure. and all these different things. And, you know, you, you imagine yourself going to the farmer's market mm-hmm. and you see these products that these farmers or these small producers are making. Right, right. Pickles. You know, right. yeah, yeah. tons of pickles. Love so them. these are companies that we can, you know, we can reach out to via the Internet. We're doing Facebook marketing. We're doing, you know, other sorts of promotional sure. you know, things to, to, to attract companies. Just bring awareness. Yeah. And, you know, and with the spicy flavors this last um, season, we just finished uh, just recently. We had countries from all over the world entering, you know, Bulgaria and Croatia and, you oh, know, Eastern cool. European. It's really expensive to send them their awards, though, <laughs> which is really like crap. I thought I didn't know it was going to be $40 to send an envelope right. with a ribbon to It's a Croatia. small world until you have to <laughs> ship something. Yeah. Yeah. You know, Australia, we had, you know, a guy that won an actual glass award. And, you know, those are pretty beefy. Right. Heavy, like You could definitely bludgeon somebody with one of them. It's a, <laughs> it's a beast of an award. There. Yeah. So when you try and send it, they take that into consideration that, you know, they Funny. weigh it. And <laughs> <laughs> you were the best. You're just way too far away for us yeah, to I was like, sense man, it. I wish that food wasn't so good. So they would, yeah, you well, know, second place would be great. Third place is great because <laughs> some ribbon's a little bit lighter. than Fifth place is the <laughs> ink chip. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Rob, I want to thank you for being on the show here. How can people get a hold of you? What's the best way? So, you, you know, I have five different phone numbers all <laughs> going to my cell phone on a regular basis. I laugh because I'm right there. Yeah. I got them going to my answering service. And I don't know yeah. which number is calling usually because it doesn't differentiate with a <laughs> ring. <laughs> just so I someone. just answer, hello, this is Rob. Right. And they're like, I'm calling for Lake Point Realty. Or is this Dash Alitos? Sure. Like, yeah. That's, that's <laughs> so my phone number, if I can give that out. Yeah, by all means. 608 358 one seven six zero. All right. Call me, text me, you know, do whatever you want. Right. That'll get you anywhere you want to get to as far as any of the companies I just commented on. Cool. And how about websites? We got a laundry list there. You know what? They all are the name of whatever it is. So dashalitos.com. So, dashalitos.com. Lake point dash realty. All right. Dot com. All right. The Flav Awards dot com, right. or you can go International Flavor Awards. We took them both, and, and they both okay. go to the same place. Okay. The Common Kitchen dot org right. dot com was already taken. Right. Don't really go to that website because it's not great. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, they don't need to anyway. Yeah, and you know all those are also available on Facebook. You sure, know? you can you can find me as Rob Grether. You can also find all those businesses. All right. Um, attached in some capacity. Super cool. 
This is awesome. I love having people that have multiple businesses going on. I, yeah, yeah. I just talk straight. You like? I think you had like five questions, and then I just kept like segueing into. Well, that's a funny story. Let me just. That's why you. I asked you to be on the show, man. Yeah. I don't want boring people yeah, in here, yeah, and yeah, listeners yeah. don't want to do there. So, <laughs> entertain the people. That's all we do. Uh -huh. <laughs> this has been Authentic Business Adventures, the business program that brings you the struggle stories and triumphant successes of business owners across the land. Coming to you from the Sun Prairie Community Studios, underwritten by Bank of Sun Prairie. If you are listening to this on the web, please like, subscribe, and share. My name is James Kateman, and Authentic Business Adventures is brought to you by Calls on Call, offering call answering and reception of services for small businesses across the country on the web at callsoncall.com, as well as Draw In Customers Business Coaching, offering business coaching services for entrepreneurs in all stages of their business on the web at drawincustomers.com. And of course, the Bold Business Book, a book for the entrepreneur and all of us, available on Amazon and wherever fine books are sold. We'd like to thank you, our wonderful listeners, as well as our guest, Rob Guther, owner of Lake Point Realty, Dash Lito's Hot Sauce, and the Common Kitchen, and the Flavor Awards. <laughs> <laughs> this And more to come. <laughs> That's awesome. Find us airing on 103.5 Wednesdays at 1 p.m., Sundays at 2 p.m., as well as at sunpraymediacenter.com. Past episodes can be found morning, noon, and night at the podcast link. Found at drawincustomers.com. Woo! A lot going on. Thank you for listening. We'll see you next week. I want you to stay awesome. And if you do nothing else, you know what to do. Enjoy your business. <laughs> <laughs>